three or four, three uh, Wednesday nights, we have been talking about the straight gate and the narrow gate. Uh, but the one thing that stands in, in, in clear view to all men tonight is an event that happened many years ago, uh, and it was called Calvary. The cross is standing in the way uh, to prevent men and women, boys and girls, from dying and going to hell. Uh, the Lord has stood straight up the cross of Jesus Christ, and he has made a statement by saying, I'm not willing that any perish. I'm not willing that any perish. I'm, I would rather desire that all would repent and come, and come to me, turn from their wicked ways. That's the desire of the Lord, is that is, he doesn't desire anybody to perish in what we know is hell. But you know what? Uh, the Bible is it to be uh, disowned by so many and recently to be burned by in the streets of some of these cities uh, that are protesting. Uh, we, we see that uh, this nation, one nation under God, according to our pledge, uh, we, we see that this one nation under God has just about abandoned and aborted her relationship to God's Word. Uh, so I'm beginning to wonder how long we can stand. I know that uh, the emails that I've been sent, the little clips and little uh, things that I've been sent in the last few weeks are all deal with the very fact uh, that the solution to COVID is going to be uh, a turn for the Antichrist. The solution is going to be as well as a, uh, an inoculation is going to be also uh, the little chip that has been designed. And one of those things, now I don't know how much truth in all this stuff. Uh, it may just be flat out and out propaganda because these Satan worshipers plant propaganda. And they, they, get, they plant false hope in Christians because every Christian is hoping and praying that the Lord will soon come again. Because we, we're seeing things deteriorate at a rate more rapid than we have ever seen before. We're seeing things fall apart uh, more than they have ever fallen apart before in the time period at which they're going. Uh, we see people today uh, who have said and who have uh, made a doctrine out of the very fact uh, that, uh, you know, it's not important anymore uh, that we repent. It's not important anymore that we live godly. It's not important that, that, that we teach sin and the repercussions of it. Just this afternoon, as before church, I watched our, our candidates for Democratic election at the top of the ticket. I watched uh, the vice president uh, stand and say that she thought women had the absolute right to their body. That means it don't matter how late the abortion, it, it's, they're going to pass it. Laws, if they can, they're going to preserve the fact that abortion will be a, a permanent fixture in the United States of America. Well, I want you to know there's a, something in the Bible called Moleth. I want you to know that there was a valley in which uh, the children of God, uh, the babies were sacrificed by the people that God said were the apple of his eye. And they were offered to the gods, to the fake gods. And that's exactly what's happened in the day. If you want to see racism, you can find it in those clinics where abortion is going on every day. A big percentage of abortions, more than 50, is, is of black babies. If you want to see a racist movement, you find it in that. Because the black babies that would be voters and citizens and that could turn back racism, as you might call it, they are being killed in abortion clinics. And, but we don't hear nobody talking about that. We also, they declared, have a good representation of BLM uh, movement. That, that is this, or not BLM, that's Black Lives Matter. That came up too, uh, endorsing the, the destruction that's in our street. Looks like we're going to have some real doozies coming up to lead our country should they be elected. But that's, a, that's all right. Uh, we all got one vote, amen? And that's, that'll be up to you. And you'll have to uh, live with whatever decision you make. But I just want to tell you today, men are throwing stones at Christ uh, from, ever, from every side. 
and from every generation. We're holding back our children. Uh, we think uh, that these, these uh, weekend ball leagues, uh, we think that they're a great thing for our children. Let me tell you what they've done. They've taken our children out of church, just like COVID-19. They've taken our children out of, oh, they have it on the road. I'm telling you, the Bible says that, that we gather ourselves on the first day of the week into the house of prayer. I'm going to tell you, a ball field is not the house of prayer. I'm going to tell you, a dance hall and studio is not a house of prayer. We have sold our children as slaves to this world that is turning us away from the Lord Jesus Christ. They put them in tutus and tatas and dance them all up and down the coast and make them look like something they should never desire to be. I want to tell you parents something in your eagerness for your children to have more and do more than you did. You have sold their souls to the devil and to the operation of the devil. I just want you to understand we have been blinded for so long we'll still be blinded. They, our children are born now. They implant them with a little chip. If your child is kidnapped even in the hospital they'll be able to locate them with this little chip. I want to tell you something that's the mark of the beast. Uh, they put it in the hand in the forehead where it can be easily read. I want you to know it's already in operation. Many have already received it. If you have children born in recent years, your children have already received it. Let me tell you something. It's already in order. And it's moving faster than any man could ever imagine. It's coming faster than, and, and men will be caught unawares and fall prey to what's going on with this stuff. I want to tell you, Calvary stands strong in, in the shadow of everything that is happening. Uh, God uh, made a statement at Calvary and that was that he loved us and was not willing that we perish. Uh, God gave, he made the ultimate sacrifice uh, when he gave his only begotten son. Uh, you know, when we think back, I think about Abraham. Abraham uh, must have been a warrior guy too. He must have been a, a great family man uh, because he took his family with him to a place that he didn't know where he was going. He wasn't a landowner over there, but he was being obedient to the Lord. Uh, and so he followed uh, the Lord. The one thing Abraham got in trouble over is, is God didn't tell him to take Lot. But he took Lot with him. And, of course, you know that led to Sodom and Gomorrah, and that led to the selfish choice by Lot, and that led to destructive things and wars. He was taken captive by kings, and Abraham had to take his servants. That's how strong a man he became. He had enough servants to fight kings uh, because God had multiplied him and given him, given him so much. I, I just want you to know, but you look back to Abraham, and Abraham was a man who believed God. And the Bible tells us that all over. Over. He became the father of all the nations. He became our father, spiritually speaking. The Bible said the seed of Abraham. And we are that seed of Abraham. We have been born of his seed. We have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, for the preservation of our soul and for the cleansing of sin that we have fallen prey to. I, I just want you to understand something. We have come to a place tonight in New Horizon Worship Center, and it's obvious by the emptiness of these seats, I don't care if we had COVID by the tens of thousands in our county. I don't care. That's not enough to keep a Christian man and woman out of the house of prayer. You can make all the excuses you want to. I'm scared I'll die. Well, I'll tell you, I'm just as scared as you are. I, I love my family just as much as you love your family. I love my life and my health just as much as you do. But I'll not put God on a shelf. I'll not put the attending at worship on a shelf so I can love my Self and love my flesh and be safe at what I call safe. I want to tell you something. There's going to be great shock that's going to come. I was telling our pastors just this week. There's going to be a great shock that's going to come. COVID's going to come from somewhere else, not the church. And we need to wake up and we need to realize we are doing an injustice to God Almighty. Not to me, not to this church, but to God Almighty who sits on high and he looks down low and his rule is everywhere. Amen. Now listen, we go into the narrow way tonight. God does not want, or the straight way. God does not want, or, or the broad way. I'll get it right directly. Amen. God does not want us going the broad way. He does not want us. But we have become a moody church. Moody in the sense, if we feel like it, we will. 
We have become a, an opportunistic church. Uh, you know, if it benefits me, I'll be there, preacher. We, we have become everything God didn't want us to be. He wanted us, uh, our fingerprints to be on the plow in, that we're plowing with in his kingdom. He wanted us to grip so hard that we wouldn't want to look back. He, I'm telling you, it's so very easy to leave here tonight, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and go live a way you shouldn't live, to go do what you shouldn't do. And you've done it, you've practiced it long enough, it's not convicting anymore, and it's led you to a point, what do you stand for? And who do you stand for? And who are you standing with? That's, that's the important thing. But if you get in that broad way, it won't be because God failed you. It'll be because you failed God. It'll be because you chose a way to go. It won't be because he pushed you in there. He led you in there. It'll be because you forsook him and forsook his law and forsook his word and ran the path where everybody else was running and thought you were doing God a favor when you were running. We got a mess, a mess on our hands. It's a bigger mess than, than minds like you and mine, Buck, could, could even imagine. It's greater than, than any, any church that could sit down and fast for 30 days could come to a conclusion. We are living in a world that has messy hands. And our little children, uh, I was looking at, at uh, today at Canon, and I was thinking, what is the little precious thing going to have to go through? It, my years are numbered, and she might die before I do. I don't know. But my years are numbered, and, and if we go by ordinary things, I won't be here very many more years. I got a funeral tomorrow for uh, Judy's aunt, 92. Some people live to be 92. Some even go uh, beyond 100. Some don't get to 15. Some don't live over 30. Some don't make it out of their 40s. But I want to tell y'all something. I know one thing I, I read out of the Bible. It's appointed unto man once to die and then to judgment. Whether you're 30, 15, 8, 9, 10, 11, 47, or 147, it's appointed unto man wants to die by what means nobody knows. But I do know the wages of sin is still deadly, and the wages of it is still death. So I'm going to, listen, I'm going to tell you, I saw tonight where it was over 100 corporations have filed for bankruptcy during COVID. Steinmart is the latest one that has filed for bankruptcy. 280 stores, the, the, the guy said we may close all of them. You say, well, that's all right with me, I don't shop Steinmart. Well, there are many, many more that you probably, if you didn't read about, you probably don't know about. Stores that you shop at, stores that you go to, you know why they're closing? We are in a desperate time. We are not in a time when they ought to be accusing uh, Donald Trump of spreading the virus. I've never heard such in my life. He had not spread anything. Uh, we live in a time when they'll stand before the nation and with the flags are flying everywhere and tell the biggest, fattest, juiciest lies that can be told. I'm telling you right now, if we were to, if Jesus was call us home tonight, I know two Democrats that would go to hell because I heard them today telling the biggest lies that you ever told. And I know my Bible says that no liar is going to enter into the kingdom. Now, they don't believe that. They tell you Bible thumpers, get out of their way. We don't believe that like you believe it. But I'm going to tell you, my Bible says a liar is not going to heaven. So that means they're in the broad way. And if you're in the broad way, that means you're going to hell. And you're not going to lollygag and, and baby sway your life through an experience and call it Christianity and end up with nothing in your basket and call yourself ready to go home. I don't want you to know you ought to be picking berries for the kingdom today. You ought to be picking them tonight. You ought to be winning So I don't care how late you work. Don't care how busy your job was today. I'll tell you, I wish some people would lose their job. They use that as an excuse long enough. I'll tell you right now, uh, God's going to bring us back to a 
point where nothing won't matter but our relationship and what we do with him and how we deal with him. Young people will start lifting their hands and praising the Lord. Old people will be revived again and the middle group will finally see the error of their ways but revival will not come. They have gone so far. Their heart has been painted hard and they're going to live with a hard painted heart for the rest of their days and not change their mind. They got a made up mind. I'm telling you now we'll be absent from church for anything. And I'm telling you right now we used to wouldn't let nothing keep us out of church. We'd sit in the church sick uh, but we came to church. But now unless any little thing happens in our homes, happens in our families and we find ourselves absent Have y'all noticed Facebook this week? As I told you in this very church, and people get, my wife tells me, Tom, you ought not to preach like you preach about stuff like that. Have I not told you that the pages will be full of prayer requests from people that are not here tonight, weren't here Sunday, hadn't been here for weeks, but the prayer thing today, I know there's been at least five or ten requests from that one lady that ain't been here with her family. She's worried about her cousin's sickness, her family's sickness, but she ain't worried about her family's soul. I know that infuriates. And if they got their, their thing on tonight, they'll be infuriated with me. But I'm going to tell the truth. And I hope it'll help. I don't hate them. I love them. And not just them, but all the, this thing is full of hypocrites in the church. They get in there and call. And, and they'll call for this prayer. Who's going to hear their prayer? God cannot hear their prayer while they're living in sin. Who's going to do anything? I don't blame them. I'd be calling somebody because they can't get through. Y'all ain't liking this, are you? Well, do like the rest of them. And we'll go all back to live feed altogether. I mean, look at here. There ain't no excuse for it. I see big family birthdays and reunions, but half the family don't come because they're scared to come. But they, we go out and they celebrate all that mess everywhere else, all over the beaches, all over Myrtle Beach. But where are they at tonight? Home. I'm tired of the double standard and the hypocrisy that we're showing before God. And that's exactly what it is. That's all it is. And it's going to lead to men and trouble. It's going to lead uh, to downfall in men's life. I want to tell y'all, I don't care what happens to me. If I can crawl to church or get one of my youngins to drive me, I'm coming to church. Do you hear me? I don't care what's going on. I don't care uh, what the president's doing, what COVID-19 or any other thing coming in here. I'm going to church irregardless. You know why? Because I made up my mind. Because I've decided that's what I'm going to do because I think that's what the Lord wants me to do. I think that's where the Lord wants me to be on every opportunity because that's exactly what it is. It's God has created an opportunity for you to draw nigh to Him. God has created a place to meet and worship Him. God has provided a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Well, my cup runneth over. Amen. You see, we miss out on all that stuff. We miss out. Look here, guys. We, our time on Wednesday night is 730. If you got a job, get off your job and come home and come to church. If you are a self-employed person, set your crew in order and tell them, here's when we're going to knock off. I don't care what's going on at that time. We are not going to overlap that time. I don't care if they are predicting rain tomorrow. I don't care if it is going to be extremely hot. I'm telling you, you ride an edict and you tell your crew members, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and we're not going to let this interfere in what we're doing. If you can help make the law, make the law. But you need to be teaching people wherever you are with every opportunity and helping people to come closer to God because the day is coming when God is going to call out His church. Amen. Well, preacher, <laughs> it was that okra. <laughs> 
So we, you kind of got the stage set. We kind of got the stage set there where the, the, what, what is, what's happening. And guys, I, honestly to you, it, it, we can't get no real news because everybody slants it and lies about it. Uh, we, we, we can get uh, plenty of untruth. We can get uh, unfounded stories and unfounded truths. If, if, they, if the night, if a law was passed in our land that any news outlet who tells a lie would be shut down immediately, we wouldn't have no news outlets. We wouldn't have a news reporter in, in Columbus County. We wouldn't have the Lord's Times or Fair Bluff Times. We wouldn't have nothing because that's the only way they can make a story. Drama is lie. And so our country, our country is being fed. You got your mouths open like a little baby and sucking lie, lie, lie. I heard this. I heard that. I want to tell you, if you can't discern truth from lie, quit listening. Things just didn't come get the Blake the way they are. They just didn't happen. It, they just didn't come to be the way they are. People made it the way it is. I want to ask. I want to ask you, young people, something. We got three, four of them. Well, I'm young too, but, but I want to ask you something. You that drive, they, we got one that drives. You're up, you uptown, and you're in Tabor City, White Boy, or, or and you see a bunch of people marching, throwing rocks and bricks at policemen. Are you going to join in with that bunch of idiots? Yeah, but you know, most you see what's happening across our country. Do you see what's happening in the media, what they're calling that? They're calling that peaceful marching. When policemen are losing their eyesight or be having concussions because uh, rocks, they'll, they'll have a company deliver rocks, uh, uh, bricks, and set them in a, a place where they can get to them and throw them through windows and, and people, people's head and line. I want to tell you something. That's a learned behavior. And, folks, I'm going to tell you, it angers me to know not one. Uh, because uh, while these people are out of work and drawing unemployment that my taxes pay and your taxes pay, that's what they're finding to do. They're being shipped in on buses from all over the United States of America and being called peaceful uh, uh, protesters. I want you to know it ain't no peaceful protest when people are dying, when people are leaving wounded and impaired from, from what's going on, when the stores are being looted and, and clear out because we owe somebody a debt of slavery. I'm going to tell you, and if any black people listening out there, I'm sick of hearing that excuse. I'm sick of hearing you didn't have no opportunity. I know in my lifetime, in the last 25 years, you've been given everything. You've been given grades at school. You've been given money by the government. You've been given everything. You've got a card you can go and shop. I have to go to work and build the money before I can go shop. I'm telling you, I'm sick and tired of it. You have the same opportunity in Columbus County, in North Carolina, and across America that I have. Get up off your duff and get out there and make a living. Amen. Well, I, preacher, you heard not to said that. Well, I'll tell y'all I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it up to here. It ain't because they grew up in the bottom in Tabor City. It's because they're ignorant. When they have the opportunity to do right, anybody with a, with a half mind knows what they're doing is wrong. And if, if there is somebody that's racist and is persecuting them, I hope our, company, our country will put them in prison forever. They're right. Racism is awful but stop throwing it around like everybody's a racist. Every little word we use under protest. Can't say nothing because of the color of somebody's skin. Can't do nothing because of the color of their skin. I'm tired of hearing it. And I'll pray that, that this thing gets resolved, but it ain't going to be with the people coming and apparently not with the one we got. So I'm going to tell you right now, we are in a perplexing way. We, I'm, we need somebody to rise up head and shoulders uh, like Saul was, even though he was a poor leader, uh, head and shoulders, and, and, and be chosen by God to lead his people. We might already have that person. I don't know. But I do know that we are in a place. Here's, God said, without holiness, no man shall see God. Without faith. 
without faith. No man can please God. I'm telling y'all right now, there are requirements. There are requirements that we all need to burrow into and see what we need to do to live like godly men, women, boys, and girls. We need to see what we need to do to do this thing right because hell is a is a awful place and we don't want nobody to be cast into hell because of they lived the wrong way. But you know what? My Bible says, my Bible says, years ago, I heard that the trends are set from California and New York. That's exactly it. The trends are set, the way people dress, the interactions and the way they live is Hollywood style. Hollywood style says anything goes. People like that fellow that got that they said uh, hung himself or committed suicide in prison, but but had all them women that he had violated and all the young girls that he had him and that woman. I hope they give her seven hundred and eighty-five years plus life. Hope she never sees the light of day again. She was the madam. She was the mama uh, that was providing and getting these girls set up for that man and Bill Clinton and others that flew on his airplane and lived in his hotels. I'm telling you right now, they might as well come on out with it. They might as well come on out with the truth. Uh, probably a lot of Washington politicians has got blood on their hands uh, from them little girls. And I hope that they'll tell the story like they told about him. I hope somebody will tell the story of who they were with and and how many times I'm so sick and tired of, of these pious group who's never had their hands dirty and said they've never done anything. I'm telling you, they slept more with other people's wives and daughters than they have with their own. Let's don't talk about how faithful I am. Let's don't get up there and quiver in our voice when we talk about good, good. There ain't no good in them, in them people. Woe unto man who calls good evil and evil good. Woe unto that man's what the Bible said. But Abraham, I started to tell you a while ago, we, were, we are descendants of Abraham. And I know Paul writing in Romans said uh, that the great blessing is not when we have circumcised our flesh, but when we have been circumcised of heart, then... We are a true Jew. When our heart has gone through a cleansing, a circumcision, when our heart has been fine-tuned to walk with the Lord, believe in our heart and confess with your mouth, it's then that we become true Jews indeed. Salvation. Glory, hallelujah. And if you really want to know the truth, Without change, we, we spend money uh, to keep water out of our little building here. We want to update it every chance we get. But if the truth be known, if you take the 51 or 2 or 3 Baptist churches, I don't know how many it is now they've added one or two, and put them all together, what they've done in the last 10 years, they all ought to be burned to the ground. How many million dollars have been wasted quote, unquote, on these ministries that, that we have joined up with that ain't getting nothing done, ain't going nowhere. It's like running a, a, a this, what's that show where they got three doors? Pick door, what, what's the name of it? What is it? Let's make a deal. It, it's the church that's making the biggest deal with the world. That's drawing the biggest number of people. Hey, let's make a deal. Choose door number one and choose door number two or choose door number three. You'll be all right whichever door you choose. But I'm afraid when you get down to the end, you're going to find a dud behind your door if you chose any other way other than Calvary and the straight gate. Amen? Well, thank God. The last three friends I've had, I've lost them tonight. But that's all right. I got one. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our pain and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. 
I remember uh, some of the lessons that I, I found it hard to believe. But let me tell you about some of them lessons. Uh, uh, Jesus said, I have not come. I have not come to bring peace. I have come and the family will line up in different avenues uh, because of your belief in me. I want to tell you something tonight. We are experiencing in our day uh, such as that. Uh, people are choosing Jesus over family. Uh, they're doing more for him than family will do for them. I just want you to understand something. He said, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. And I promise you, as much as I love my family and as much as I love ever. Uh, everything about them I'm telling you right now I will never step over the line and call right wrong and wrong right in their life and nor in your life and so I want you to settle that record and I want you to settle it now you can't live ungodly and expect me to, to love and laugh and run after you when I know you're not living the way you're to live amen that's just the truth of it and that's the way of it with me. And that's it. You can't live with that. You can't live with me. Just, there just ain't no way. Look here. The family you ought to have is the church. And I know we got some church members with flat tires. I understand that. I understand that. But God, unless you got a badge that God signed, don't come out here judging the sheep of my pastor. That's my job to preach the word of God and to pursue them when they seem to be getting out of the trail of yonder. That's my job. Otherwise, keep your mouth shut about them. Because I just want you to understand something. We have got a job to do. And we need to get on that job. And we need to do what we have been called to do. We need to wade in the pond that God dug for us to wade in. But we all need to be doing something. We have a ready record and account. That's one thing about it. We can always go back because God gave us a starting place. God gave us a record. And he said, look at the church in Jerusalem. What did they do? Uh, the Bible said they continued daily in the apostles' doctrine. They went from house to house, and they were all in one accord. They shared things so that none lacked among them and had no need. We are a million, 322 billion miles away from Jerusalem. We have moved so far, we won't even help one in the church especially one outside the headline in yesterday's paper news reporter said something to this effect the percentage of people in our county who is desires of food has increased a, it was a huge percent that mean, here's what that means in, in Tom Ward language. People are going hungry more than ever before in our county. It has increased, church. We got $130,000 in our general operating fund. Are we embarrassed that people are going hungry? We got two deacons here tonight. Three deacons, are y'all embarrassed that people are going hungry and we got $130,000 cash? We have no debt on our building. We have nothing. Aren't we a mission church? Southern Baptist Missionary Church where we believe missions are important. Why don't we find a, an avenue if we can uh, the real, genuine people that we could help, not that any handout crowd. We're not going to pull a drive through out there because it'll be Cadillacs pulling through. We want people that are genuinely hungry, that we won't spend our money in foolish ways. But, folks, we need to do something if it's, that's the truth. I'm on, I don't know how we're going to find out how. I don't know how. I guess I could call and find out where they got those numbers from. But those numbers, if that's the truth, we got something we need to be doing. I gave our check uh, to the Columbus Baptist Association, made it out to them, and at $800 for, for backpack buddies, that, that's going to buy a lot of those meals they're going to send out. They were very gracious and thankful for your gifts. That's just the beginning. We got so much to do. Did y'all know that? 
I remember Sister Leona was was talking, telling Judy about uh, she was at a grocery store. Someone out in the parking lot was hungry, had a sign or, or told them, could you give me something to eat? She went inside and bought some, I forgot what it was, she named what it was and brought it out. Are you serious? I don't want that. Weren't very hungry, were they? Weren't very hungry. Did you know that famine came in the land of Israel and they ate their flesh? Do y'all know that you've never been through a famine yet? Do you understand we have never had our ribs poking out and it looked like our eyes was going to bulge out of our head because we starved to death? But our teenagers will go to the refrigerator and whine and gripe because their mama hadn't filled it up with junk for them to eat and get big fat bellies over. And, and they whine and grind about it, unthankful and unappreciative that they got shoes on their feet, a room to go to bed in, and, and food on their table. I'm so sick and tired of these spoiled young people today. I'd love to take my belt on all of them and get them out behind this church and wear their rear end out. Never heard of such greedy, selfish people as our teenagers are today. Our teenagers growing up didn't have makeup. Women, when I was growing up, didn't have makeup. You saw a lot of beautiful people back then. Didn't put on no makeup just for who they were because, number one, you can't afford Maybelline and all that. They didn't have, that was not the focus and emphasis. Beautiful flowing hair. They were glad they were born with black hair or blonde hair or whatever hair, red hair. They didn't want to be like a movie star who, who flashed that beautiful hair. I'm going to tell you, yours won't never be like that. You can't never take something natural and change it to something unnatural and people call it beautiful. Mary, I thought I'd get an amen on that. But never have we seen. And then we wonder why the portals of hell is filling up. When it starts to rain, every time it does, and it rains real hard, I, I think about my pond. It's washed, over, it's washed out three times, and I'm telling you, it washed out. And it went over in these last storms, but it, it's washing out from the back. Got to get to it if it'll ever get dry enough and feel the back end so it don't wash out. But I'm going to tell you, uh, it, it is coming. And, and I said it, Landon. I, I said years ago. I preached over there at Elizabeth River Baptist Church in Norfolk, Virginia as a young itinerant. I'm telling you, I was 28, 29 years old. I had so much fire on me, I couldn't walk anything, anything flammable. The power of God, and I stood in that pulpit. Oh, I was going to be taken out for supper and taken out for dinner and all that stuff. You've eaten as much supper and dinner as I have. When I got through with that message, they didn't, none of them. They wouldn't even say, preacher, we're glad to have you. And I had to go back two more times. Amen. I did notice that on the people on the front row moved back about three pews. But let me tell you something. Y'all know nothing. I don't know where the fire that I used to have went. I don't know where the boldness I used to have went. But, uh, boy, I'm telling you right now, we have sure let down. We have sure turned away. We have sure become too accepting. And the cross standing right in the middle of our life. What does that cross stand for? Death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is the empty tomb. Life. I am come that you might have life. And without that life, broad way. Without that hope, broad way. Hell, hell. Nobody knows what hell looks like but the devil. Nobody's been to hell and come back either. I don't care what they said in that book. Nobody has been to heaven or hell and come back to live here in this world. Nobody wants to come back and live in this world after you go to heaven. But I just want to tell you, it's not a desirable place. 
but it's mentioned more in the Bible than heaven is. The prophets preached about it. The apostles preached about it. The evangelists preached about it. Everybody preaches about it in the Bible. We have an a accurate account from beginning to end of hell and the great tragedy of hell and what people are going to go. What would a man give in exchange for his soul? Have you read any of the information from up upper North Carolina there where the earthquake was and the reaction of the people? They're scared to death. Never been affected by nothing like that. Scared to death. Re I, about every week I read in the paper, somebody breaks through somebody's window and ends up standing in the people's bedroom and in some way try to rob and molest I never, what is going on with this molestation stuff of old women that, that these thugs want to molest old women? What is that all about? Have they run out any any pleasurable thing to do? They don't get no pleasure out of a man, woman, husband, and wife relationship no more. Got to have more, 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 and the most weird, perverted stuff you've ever heard of. I want to tell you right now. If you ever commit sexual sin, you cannot wash it off. The Bible said it's of the body. You cannot wash it off. The stain will ever be there to haunt you. You can never outgrow it. It will be in your body and the complications you will suffer for because you committed it. You chose, That's one thing you invited into your body and you're going to pay for it. According to my Bible. But does God forgive preacher? He sure does. But you know why does tear still grow among the wheat? Well, that's the part we don't realize. I planted seed in my yard two or three years ago. I didn't see, and now I'm seeing it now. I don't know how it laid out there for that long. Grass seed. You don't realize them seeds you you sowing out there. I try to tell people over and over and over. I want you to go home tonight. I'm not even going to. I want you to look up the word tar, T-A-R. And see the health effects of tar in your body. A very common source of getting tar in our lungs is from smoking. Anybody who has ever smoked, whether it be one pack or two packs a day or a hundred packs a week, will have that problem with their lungs. It don't matter. And I'm going to have it because I smoked at an early age. I'm telling you. I'm going to have it. And I'll gag for breath when you get that mess. <coughs> Trying to get it when that stuff comes. But you could have stopped it and the tar. I was down there at the Veterans Hospital down in Charleston. I weren't down in a patient. But in the Veterans Hospital, at the front of the hospital down there, they have a set of lungs. They have a set of lungs of a smoker and a set of lungs of a non-smoker. Y'all ought to go look at it. And you know, I've known that all my life. But I didn't, I wasn't educated enough to know it. Because I'll tell you right now, I used to crop tobacco five days a week. And I'd be out there cropping and I'd be going along there and I'd be cropping that mess. And when I got through, the hair on my arm was matted together. My hands had turned yellow. And they can say it's the company's putting it in there now. That's a lie from hell. It's always been in there. The company didn't put tar in it. Bless God, when I was cropping it out there, that same tar dried out in the barn and went to the cigarette makers and went into cigarettes that they rolled. It's been like that a long time. And millions of people have died, and they didn't know what killed them. But I'm telling you tonight, we know. But 
I can take this message and all I've done is offend smokers. You mad as the devil because I brought it up. But that's all right. Be offended. But if I can save your life, if I can, them children you got or that husband you got or that wife you got, if I can save you from a premature death, I'll sure try to do it. Same way about all this other mess. I, I know I preach and God, uh, look here. If I think it's better to not wait the next Wednesday. Amen. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. But I'm glad I was here tonight, and I'm glad that, that, and I'm not through. I can't quit here. I'm going to have to come back one more time on this broad way. I just got the front of it opened up. I just got the envelope opened up to trying to show what's happening, kind of show what's going on in our world that's keeping people and sending people to hell. And here's the last statement, and I'll leave you to think about it until next Wednesday. You know why people have forsaken God? Because they took a look at the church. God help us. If judgment first begin here, how shall they that are without escape? Get down on your knees before God. You that are listening, and I know some of our members are on them, on them phones listening. I'd get on my knees right now, and I'd beg God with every bit of my heart, please forgive me for I could have been at church. God, I'm so sorry. If you'll forgive me, get me through this opportunity. Get through this, what I thought was a need. I won't do that again. School started back. We're going to use school now. Going to use school. People are more upset that they ain't going to get to play ball than they are about not being able to come to church. That's the truth. Cussing the coaches and the decision makers. You just wait. If I get a vote, I'll get rid of them. Well, we ain't going to get to do this here. Cheer, hit the ball, jump the ball, whatever kind of ball it is. Amen. They took a look at the church and got discouraged. I love all them that are not here. I miss talking to them, Ronnie and Sherry, Leon and Doug. Doug Jr. and Cody, Millie. I miss all these people that are absent. Cornelius and her family. I miss all Betsy and her families at the beach, I think, on their weekly, yearly vacation. I miss them. I don't care where they're at. Jeffrey and, and Britt. I miss that Judy's not here. She, she was not feeling good. I miss y'all. I miss you. If you're listening, I miss you. I want to tell you. But we ain't helping ourselves or we ain't helping get nobody to the Lord. We just ain't doing it. We have taken every means necessary. We spray this thing. It'll be stained with spray when we get through. We got masks laying on the table and hand cleaner hanging on the wall. What more do you need? What more do you need? What more do you need? Let me tell y'all a little secret. When you get sick, I dare you, you better not go to the hospital. They are full of this mess. Amen. Look here. I dare you don't get in a crowd down there at the House of Blues. Oh, yeah, the church members go to the House of Blues. They're down there dancing and grooving and shaking it and baking it, and they get that mess. Some of them don't even know it. They have a sniffle, a nose blow, and go on with their life. Some old person. The average age is way up there near 80 years old of people that have died with COVID. Because, and they have shut in that generation. 
Orwell said that they not only would there be abortion, but the older folks also. And I, they got a word they call that. Our governor in New York demonstrated how we can go about that, send COVID people to the rest homes, and you can wipe out that population of Social Security drawers. But he takes, feels no remorse, makes a little joke out of it when he gets on television. That's up to him and God. I don't know the circumstances, but it sure appears it was wrong. May the Lord help us. Fathers, we bow before you tonight. Sometimes we feel like we may step out a little too far. But, Lord, we're still in the water of the Spirit. But, Lord God, tonight if somebody don't say something sometime, it's going to be a bigger mess than it already is. Lord Jesus, touch that soul that's nearest hell. Touch the mind of that teenager that's about on the very verge of making a dumb decision about their life. Again, we pray tonight for our teachers, for the administrators that are trying to put something together. If they can get through this idiocy of state and federal government myth about school. Lord, help us in the meantime. Bless our homes that have been stripped and defiled by this world. Bless our lives that won't never be the same because we compromise. I know you'll cleanse us, Lord, but it's hard. God, help us, each and every one. Touch that soul that's near as hell. Be with that family that's about to split. God help us is our prayer in the name of Jesus. We're going to have our invitation. If any of you would like to come, I sure would plead with you to come. Paul said, I beseech you. That means I highly beg if you have a need to come. By the tender mercies of God. To lay down yourself before the altar of the Lord. And dare him to put his eyes upon you. And search you. And see what he finds. That's what the psalmist did. The psalmist said, search me, O Lord, and know my ways. If there you find wickedness in me, change me, O Lord. Psalms 139. Please think about it. It don't take this church overflowing with people to make an effective church. It don't take a church with money to be an effective church. It takes a church that has a sound doctrine and are led by the Spirit of God. That's what it takes. I hope we can be all of that that would please the Lord. Would you stand together? And watch, you probably got something to play up there if you would for an invitation. But we don't need a song. Come, just come on. Just come right on. Just come right on. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Just come right on. Just come right on. Find your place before the Lord. Say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me.